Here we go. Well, we're, we're live, and first time we're doing a morning run. And so welcome everybody who's uh, joining us. Very, very pleased to have Les Barker with us. Um, and this came about because I started to include poetry in my radio program, and Alan immediately said, oh, Les Barker, <laughs> fantastic. And so we've been looking at your your poems and uh, absolutely amazing, Les. So very, very pleased to uh, to see them. Well, tell us a bit about um, about where your inspiration comes from. Um, it usually arrives while I'm asleep, and then I just write it down in the morning. So that's what tends to happen. But it can come from absolutely anywhere. I just put as much in my head as I can, reading the papers, looking at things that are of interest on the web, reading books, anything that that might help to fill my head with something useful. And then hopefully it comes out at some later point in a poem. Amazing. Amazing. I've, I've um, seen it a few times, Les, and uh, I think it's it's what stands out with yourself and anybody else that might be watching that's seen you will know that the presence on stage and the way that you put those poems across with such humor and even if it's on a serious subject you know it just blows people away because it, it relates to everybody doesn't it oh yeah yeah i mean i i write about what i find interesting and and what i think other people find interesting and I've always thought that the fact that I'm performing it means that I learn which bits don't work. So next yeah. time I write a poem, I just don't include those bits and I, I cross them out of the, the poems I've already written. So it, it eventually gets down to just the bits that work. And do you still have the books with all the crossing out in? No. <laughs> now, I, years and years ago, I used to write them all on paper and there was an awful lot of cro crossing out and little arrows going from one bit of the page to another. But now that I do it all, all on, on the computer, then it's, it's a lot tidier by the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like I like the rhymes that you've got in your in your poems. They're always a little bit of a, of a surprise, but it's a nice surprise. Yeah, I, I, I try to do interesting things, yeah. Uh, I mean, I like an interesting life, so it's interesting to me to write them. So hopefully it's interesting to people who are, are listening to them as well. Yeah, well, yeah it definitely is, because you, you always have a packed audience list, don't you? Yeah, it's, it's a real surprise, but... That's I'm very happy about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you still writing to this day? Are you still jotting down and, and producing stuff? And... Yes, I am. Um, when the first lockdown arrived, round about March-ish, I thought I'd perform a public service and put put all my recorded stuff on onto YouTube so people would have something else to, to look at and listen to. And round about September-ish, I found I'd, I'd finished putting all the, all the CDs on, online. So I've, I've been writing things as much as I've had ideas to write ever since. And Boris has been very helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah is any of that out out that we can listen to yet or um, you called it anything there's quite a lot on youtube about boris yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it, he comes out with things at regular intervals and it's, as a prime minister it's not a lot of use but as an inspiration he's really good <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. i know exactly what you mean <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I finished one this morning, actually. All right, all right. You might be able to hear it here first, then. Can we have? Can you hear it? Can I find it? Uh, where's it gone? Uh, 
Oh, there we are. Prime Minister's questions. <clears throat> I listen to it quite often, and every week's much the same. It needs a little revision and maybe a change of name. Prime Minister's answers, because that's his appointed task. He's meant to be there to give answers, to give answers to the questions he's asked. Not to answer the questions he'd rather, nor to waste the whole hour that he's here. I'd prefer it if he was coherent, but that's asking too much, I fear. I know there are rules in the Commons, regulations unchanged year on year, but it's time things were made rather simpler, or we'll lose everything we hold dear. Mr Speaker, what is your purpose? This, sir, is what I'd advise. Just make the fool answer the questions, and don't let the fool tell us lies. <laughs> Brilliant. Just, just, just something you've jotted, you've jotted down, down while having a while cup having of coffee. Cup of coffee. Uh, well, that took a uh, two or three hours to to, to oh, get it wow. to work last night and finish it off this morning. But basically, it's it's blatantly obvious. I I watch Prime Minister's questions fairly often and. I don't think I've ever seen him answer anything. He, he just says something different, or maybe you get a few grunts and a few stutters and a bit of burbling and <laughs> no real words. Yeah, yeah. it's a frustrating time. I, it is. I, I like to have the person, the author of the poem, read the poem out. Um, when I play them on the show. And I wonder because with your poems, you perform them, but you've also had your poems performed by quite a few well-known personalities. What's it like having people recite your poems? It's, it's certainly not a problem. They're, they're written to be performed. So whoever performs them, they're actually doing what, what they're meant to be doing. Um, it's it's been really surprising how some of the people I've had doing things. It, it's, it's not something I ever expected, and it's it's quite an honour at times. They don't always do it the way I'd do it, but then why should they? And that's that doesn't present a problem at all. It's just a different uh, slant they put on on it. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it works really well, sometimes it, it doesn't work, but it's up to them to do it the way they want to do it, that's fine. Yeah, and songs, now, I mean, your poetry has been put into song, hasn't it? Yeah, I've I started working in folk clubs purely by accident, so... I got to know a lot of folk songs and I've I've got, got to have ideas for things to do with them and just got on with it and eventually formed a band which performed a lot of them. And it's nice to hear people singing them. And I've always had the idea that comedy is something to perform just as well as you perform something if it was a serious song. Mm. It's not just something you can throw out anyway and expect people to laugh. You you need to do it properly. So when I've worked with people, it's always been with good musicians who, who do a good job. Yeah. Are there any particular type of venue that you like best? Do you like small, sort of intimate folk clubs or do you prefer a big festival night? I like the mix of it. It's... It's great performing in little clubs and having been doing it for nearly half a century, I, I know most of the people there. But apart from that, if I do a festival in front of several thousand people, I enjoy that as well, that they all work. And it's nice that every gig I do is different. 
Yeah. Alan, you yeah. said was at Tolvi, didn't you? Um, I think it was, I think it was Wickham that I saw him. I think it was 15, 17, 18, I think. One of the nicest ones is because you're, you're at a festival and they, they always put Les on when there's a, there's a, there's a well-known artist on the main stage. And, and, and even when the biggest names are being performed, and I think I remember one in Wickham where they had a beautiful tent with carpets on the floor and, and Les was performing in there and you had a job to get in because because it was it was Mr. Barker performing his poems. <laughs> and it's just it was just wonderful. And and everybody knows knows this knows the poems and les will often stop when it comes to word and everybody will share out that, that finishing line it's 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 an amazing experience i recommend anybody when they, when they get a chance hopefully you'll be doing some tours um again les well i hope so yeah i hope we'll get out again one day um i've always <laughs> written things with choruses because because i started in folk clubs so mm. when i first started thinking about getting gigs then i knew i'd got to do what folk singers do folk audiences like to have things to sing to so i gave them things to talk to yeah. and, <laughs> and it worked and it's carried on working and as far as i'm concerned the less i have to do the better <laughs> <laughs> I played I played the track the last but one of the Mohedrons on my show last week, and it's one of these titles that you think that's obvious, but of course someone had to sit down and write it. So thank you. Yeah, the the, the title came from a Gary Larson cartoon. Okay. I found it in one of his books, and it just seemed such a lovely thing to try and write about that I just got on with it. Some yep. of my ideas do come from other places and some just appear in my head. It's, it's a mixture. As long as it's a good idea, I don't care where it comes from. <laughs> do, do, do you make yourself giggle when you write them? You know, when you're actually thinking of the, and you write a line and you, you giggle to yourself, think, that, that is funny. Yeah, I, <laughs> if I enjoy it, then then it's probably going to be a good one for other people as well. If I, if I didn't like it, then there's no point in telling anybody else about it. No, true. No, true. Yeah. So, um, go on. Go on. So, do, you, do you think your, your poetry has, has changed over the years as, um, as you've sort of moved through life? I hope it's got better because I've learned more about how to do it. Um, I suppose I'm reacting to to how people in the audience react to me if it works and I do more of it. So there's been a, a big change ever since we've been performing on Zoom rather than performing to audiences. Because you, you can't do things like chorus poems on Zoom. It, it just becomes one massive echo after about five seconds. <laughs> So it, it's it's mainly things that have that don't have choruses, and it, and it's often it's often shorter things. Mm -hmm. But that that's been the only real major change that's happened over the time <laughs> I've been doing it. Live performance is basically a live performance. You just learn to do it better over over the the, the years. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. <clears throat> I think the thing with the poetry is that with a poem, the words are so important because that is the that is the whole thing about that particular piece of work, isn't it? So the audience are concentrating intently on what you're saying in the poem, whereas a song, you know, they can get lost in the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there are many songs which I think are, are fabulous songs and. If I actually listen dispassionately to the words, often there's nothing there at all, but it's such a beautiful song because of the melody or the way it's performed or, or whatever. But when I'm performing a poem, yes, I can make a mess of it by performing it badly, but in the main, if the words are good, then the poem's good. Yeah. 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 Are you still raising money for the... Uh... 
for the charity that you love? The no, I think we've, that that come to an end? They, they they took stuff off CDs mainly, and and some from the books, which they they handed to other famous people from different areas of entertainment, and and did that and. I think we got five albums, three of which were double albums. So uh, they did get quite a lot of tracks out of it, and they they did they did earn an incredible amount of money for a good cause, which is an absolutely fabulous thing to do. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. They were made to to pay for lessons for blind people to to learn how to use computers, which of course is potentially extremely valuable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Braille online. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's all it's all the stuff you see in, when you're looking at Windows Control Panel, and you look at all the different ways of having large print and having translations of audio of, of text into audio and vice versa. It's all that sort of stuff, and I don't know how I'd learn to do that if I couldn't see it on the screen, but. Mm -hmm. Right. That's an excellent, excellent charity. So hopefully that's still going strong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They are still selling a few, and and it's it's done a really good job for them over the years. Yeah. So when you're performing your poem, do you get people shouting requests out for you? Yes. You do now and again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. Usually it was something I was going to do anyway. Um, <laughs> occasionally you get one that I've not performed for 35 years because it just isn't good any good enough anymore. So I generally don't don't do them. But otherwise, if people want something, then fine, they can hear it. Yeah, oh, well. I, I think it's amazing, it's amazing that you can hold all those in your head. <laughs> oh, don't I have them on the paper? Ah, oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I can never understand the book. How, yeah, I can never understand how, how singers can actually remember all the words to everything all the time. It's so much right. to me. Right. It is. <laughs> I think that's that's part of part of your act, though, Les, because you have you have your your book in front of you, and half the time I'm sure it's only a prop because you once you get going, you do know it. I, I probably do know. A lot of them, more or less, by heart, and, and sometimes I, I find I've been reading it for a minute or two, and and I forget the next line. But by then, I don't know where I am on the page because I've not been looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you ever, you ever get in the situation where someone's calling for a poem, and you you have to say that one's coming later. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you have you any favourite comedy performers yourself? Um, oh yes, of course. Um, when I first started, I was basically copying Mike Harding. He used to do monologues, and I wrote the first three or four in the same sort of vein as the stuff stuff Mike was writing. And another of my huge heroes was Jake Thackeray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he used to write <laughs> fabulous songs. You're preaching for a converted uh, there, Les. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we have an artist come on on this show occasionally that that does a Jake Thackeray. What was it like a tribute? And he yeah, sounds fake, 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 fake oh, Thackeray. Fake oh, yeah, Thackeray. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know John very well. We've done you a few think? things together. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that would be a great, great combination. You and you and John on the on the stage, or you know, sharing the same bill. Yeah. Yes. We, we've. He runs a festival near York, which I've done a couple of times, and he's also involved in Costa del Folk, which I did for the first time the year before last. So I do I do get to see him quite a bit. Great. Oh, great. <laughs> Yes, yes, he's been on a few times, and uh, he, well, he was down this way, and I, I met him. In fact, I often relay the story that I met Jake Thackeray some years ago. <laughs> Did an interview with him at theatre. Um, what a lovely guy! Yeah, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Absolutely, amazing. absolutely amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah. And do and I understand that you're going to be? Are you, is it still on that this E Festival with Polly Morris? Be, did I read that you're going to be doing one on the June June the eleventh with? Is that a, is that going ahead? Uh, I don't know about June the 11th yet. Um, oh, right. I'm doing an online, this is an online Chippenham and Chester festival at the bank holiday at the end of May, which I'm doing. Yeah. And there's another online one at Wirral the weekend after. I've not heard about the other one yet, but maybe I will. Maybe you are. <laughs> uh, I know it's, it's supposed to be an, an online one, I think. In, in, um, we, and one of our friends, Polly Morris, is uh, is going to be appearing on it. But I'll double check that. I picked it up offline, so maybe they haven't told you yet, Liz. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a strange time for gigs. Um, my, my my gig list contains the two online ones I do know about, and then there's a lot of live things sometime after that, which may or may not happen, and. We just don't know. It's no. it's very odd. Mm -hmm. The penciling in of the diary. Yeah, it must be odd doing a a live gig on Zoom because you're you're not getting that same audience response, are you? No, it it is different. Um, it still works. It just means you perform a different selection of poems and and you learn how to do it mm. before zoom concert started i was i was doing zoom events every week learning welsh and stuff like that and going to lectures and things so i, I knew basically how the technology worked so it's just, just a matter of applying applying it in a gig and finding out which poems worked and which ones didn't work as well as they do live and, and just they're just in the set Poems in Welsh sound intriguing, and I understand that you uh, managed to put that very, very long place name in one of your poems. Well, it is a Welsh place now. <laughs> it's the obvious place to put it. <laughs> and you going to say it for us? <laughs> Are you going to say it for us? Lamba poch gwyn gych go ger a chwer yn dro poch lantysilio go go go. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, I think it's a wrap. Was he thinking about the language to learn? Sorry? Go on, Tony. All right. I was, yeah, I was going to ask about that. Just learning a new language or learning another language and then writing poetry in it. Do you write it in Welsh or in English and then try to translate it? I've been speaking Welsh for quite a while now, so I'm probably thinking in Welsh mm. these days. It's hard to tell. You just get an idea, and it doesn't really matter which language it's in. But um, It does take me a lot longer to write a Welsh one because English, I've spent my whole life speaking it, so all the words are already in my mind, ready to come out. But Welsh, I've got to use basically a rhyming dictionary and look for a list of words that have a certain ending right. that I want to use, and then just go through all of them. Sometimes there's hundreds of them and, and pick out the one that actually fits and then then get another list and find the next bit. So I can spend two months writing a Welsh poem sometimes, which I'd, I'd do in two days if it was in English. Mm. But it's, it's a challenge and it's it's an interesting new game. I've been I've been writing in English for forty odd years, so it it was it was time to try a new game. Yeah, keeps keeps the mind alert and keeps you on your toes. I think. It's... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If you're green, you're growing. If you're ripe, you're rotten, Liz. Right. Well, it's been brilliant. Any any more questions for Les before we wrap it up? 
Well, I don't know. I wouldn't mind hearing another poem if Les has got a short one. Uh, or even a long one. Okay, yeah, I think I could do it. Yes. Here's one I wrote the other day. Um, this is based on a, a definition from the Oxbridge English Dictionary. I've served my time on the road, to be precise, on the A483, putting bacon on butties and butter on baps, milk and sugar in coffee and tea. I can serve fried egg upon bread, white or brown, from my place in the lay-by unaided. But lately I've noticed when I go into town, one small part of the job's been upgraded. All those dealers in liquefied beans are now more than just missus or misters. They're the masters of shiny machines and it says on their shirts they're baristas. And what do they offer but mocha, latte, flat white, cappuccino? In my kitchen on wheels I do portable meals and I need a small boost to my ego. I too can boast special skills. All these years in the lay-by I've practised. So much serving breakfast or lunch upon brown or white buns. So my shirt now proclaims I'm a Baptist. <laughs> I've got sausage to slap on your bap. I can offer whatever you want. And if you're in doubt, I have a menu laid out in an elegant baptismal font. I can do you a burger with onions. It's an art that should not be despised. When your chosen main course comes with red or brown sauce and your bacon and eggs been baptised. <laughs> um, Les, Les where, can, where can we buy your books and records? You can buy the books from my web, the books and CDs from my website. Um, the new stuff, like the two I've done this morning, is only available on on YouTube because there's there's not really been any point in publishing anything when I can't get out to sell it much. <laughs> okay. And the house is full of the ones I've not sold yet. <laughs> and and your website is what lesbarter dot com. No, Mrs. Ackroyd dot com. Ah, I've, I've yeah, I've got that in front of me at the moment. Right. Yeah, and if you go to the bottom of the page, there's a link to the shop from there. Uh, Mrs. Ackroyd's online emporium. That's the one. That's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> did you did did you ever get another dog, Les, to come on board with you? Or no, it, did, it didn't seem right at the time. No. Um, and and then you just sort of get used to to being on your own and getting on with it, and and sometimes when when you live on your own, you go away somewhere and you can't take the dog with you, so it. It gets difficult, which is a shame because I, I would really like one. Yeah, yeah. It was great. It was a, your best friend there, and it oh, yeah. got its own yeah. spot on stage and its own band, and yeah, it's a wonderful yeah. dog. Yeah. Oh, well, times change. We move on. Move on. Yeah. 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 Looking forward looking to seeing forward. you again live at some point, though, Liz. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting out again. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I don't know if people are watching, but there was supposed to be on in July the Warwick Castle Festival. I don't know if that's yes, I'm, I'm down for that. So if it does happen, then then I'll be there. Yeah, excellent. excellent. Yeah. yeah, nice venue that Warwick Castle. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I've I've done the the festival at the old venue at the, at the the grounds of the university, which was always a nice one anyway. Yeah. Mm. Um. This, it, if it does go on, then it, it will be somewhere be different to go. It'll be nice and it'll work because their festivals always work. They know yeah. what they're doing. That'll be a massive That'll reunion. Be. Yeah, it will be, yeah. <laughs> We've got to, uh, some people catching up uh, down the side here. And said that Mrs. Ackroyd was a real character. <laughs> oh, she was. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. 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 
Les, um, we're up up there. Thank you very, very much for chatting to us this morning. Oh, it's a pleasure. I would love to make contact with you again and maybe hear another poem that we can use in our, our program because uh, I, I know that they're going really well. As soon as you mention your name, everyone goes, oh, yeah, fantastic. Right, well, yeah. I'd very much like to do it. Thank you. Yeah. Let's, let's get you on again, Liz. Great. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I now have a hankering for a bacon and egg bat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Okay. <laughs> for those people that are watching, we can apologise for the echoes, but it might not be the echoes, it might be our stomachs rumbling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, our important guest didn't uh, didn't echo, so that was yep. that's uh, brilliant. Yeah. Okay, we're well, going to end the broadcast. So thank you very much, everyone who's been watching. We just end that bit. <laughs>